The dark hardwood hammocks of South Florida are home to some of the strangest and most unique animals you'll ever see. Among these are a vast array of weird spider species, some of which you might not have ever heard of before. One of these is the elusive octopus spider, whose incredible camouflage and strange hunting behaviors make it difficult to spot, especially in these expansive habitats. Today, we're exploring one of these wooded areas in South Florida in search of some of these weird spiders, and though it isn't our main target, scanning through some short palm trees quickly yielded us an incredible spider find. All right, children, this right here on the stick is one of the most unique species of spiders that you will ever see and that I have ever seen either. This is the feather-legged orb weaver, or Uluborus glomosus. This is a member of a family called the hackled orb weavers, which themselves, while they're not true orb weavers, are an amazing family that has one unique trait that sets them apart from pretty much every other spider. You might have heard that all spiders are venomous, to varying degrees. Even orb weavers, which are harmless to people, are mildly venomous. But the Uloboridae, or the hackled orb weavers, are the one family of spiders that breaks this rule. They are completely non-venomous, as in they completely lack the venom glands altogether. And while they are predatory like basically every other spider, they don't subdue their insect prey with venom. They do build relatively circularly shaped webs, which is where the orb weaver part of their name comes from, but otherwise they're not very much like orb weavers at all. This species, Uloborus glomosus, does not get too much bigger than this. This right here is pretty much a fully grown individual. I don't think this species gets any bigger. Some of the other Uloboridae species do get a little bit bigger, but they are very small spiders. This specific species right here is called the feather-legged orb weaver, because at the ends of those very long antenna form or feeler using front two legs, there is a really bushy tuft of hairs, which is where that name comes from. This species is pretty variable in terms of pattern, though usually they're this pretty patternless light brown color. Some of them will be a little bit darker brown, maybe with some pale stripes on them. But overall, they're a very camouflaged, not brightly colored at all spider. Structure-wise, they're pretty easy to identify with those very long front two legs with the bushy, feathery-like hairs at the end, whereas the other last three pairs of legs are very short and held kind of to the side of the abdomen. The head or prosoma is very small, and the abdomen or the epistosoma is pretty compact but humped on the top, so it almost looks like it has a hump back. When these things are resting in their webs, or in this case on a stick, they don't really look like a spider at all. They use those very long legs and the strangely shaped abdomen as kind of what is known as disruptive camouflage. Which means, while this thing isn't really patterned to be camouflaged, and it doesn't really blend in with anything, the very unusual shape of the spider makes it very hard for predators to discern the shape of a spider, or of an edible animal at all. It looks just kind of like a strange piece of debris until you look close and see the legs and tiny little eyes. I wanna make sure that this beautiful feather-legged orb weaver makes it nice and safely back to her web in these palm fronds so she could keep hunting for insects and somehow killing and eating them without venom. So let's keep looking for more spiders, but I am so glad that we finally got to find this amazing feather-legged orb weaver. All right, now to get back to our main target. These spiders will be almost perfectly camouflaged on twigs and branches, making them almost impossible to spot without carefully scanning each and every tree and shrub. But while walking over a more flooded part of this wooded area, I noticed something out of place on this willow tree. You couldn't tell I was holding a banana, right? Perfect. Perfect. Oh, Tommy. Ah. Get on, get on the stick. Spiders, they're unpredictable. Oh, get on the stick, on the stick, stick, stick. Oh, and you can see that it has just folded right back up into the position it was in. So let's learn all about this amazing spider. All right, children, this right here that I have on this stick is one of the strangest looking spiders that you could find out here in South Florida. This is an octopus spider, or an octopus crab spider, a member of the genus Tamaris, or Maris, I don't know if the T is silent, but they are commonly known as octopus spiders because of the way that their legs look. As you can see, they have these very 
soft looking legs that almost look like tentacles. And it makes their walking a little awkward, but this is actually helpful in their hunting strategy because like most crab spiders, these are ambush predators, except in a very different way than what you might expect from a crab spider. A lot of the more famous crab spiders are ambush predators in more open grassy areas with lots of wildflowers growing. So a lot of crab spiders will be brightly colored and they'll sit in the middle of flowers where unsuspecting insects that are pollinating like bees, moths, flies, will land on a flower and not know that a crab spider is there to catch and eat it. However, these have a different ambushing strategy. Instead of being brightly colored and blending in with bright objects out in the field, these are very dark, brown, and mottled and blend in perfectly with branches in these habitats that they live in. It's not only their body that is patterned to look like they blend in with branches though. They also use their legs to help them blend in on a stick. I'm gonna see if I can get it to crawl on the stick. You will see that they have this basically instinctual way of sitting on a stick where they stretch their front two pairs of legs out directly in front of them to where they it blends in and makes it look like it is barely sloping off the stick. Then the abdomen or the epistosoma is kind of rough in texture and patterned like bark and their back two legs are very short and they tuck them underneath the abdomen to where you can't even tell that number one this spider has legs when it's sitting and number two you can't even tell that there's a spider there because they completely hide their legs and their abdomen is colored in that disruptive patterning that just you cannot see the shape of a spider when they are rested and this is both to protect itself from predators as it's very hard to notice this spider if you want to eat the spider. And number two, it is very useful in their ambush predatory style, just like most other crab spiders. Except these will be catching insects like ants and other insects that would be crawling on branches, not knowing that they're crawling directly into the path of one of these octopus crab spiders. Their front two legs being so much longer than their back two legs almost looks like the disproportionately large claws of a crab. And I don't know if this has to do with the name, but I have also noticed a lot of the flower-dwelling crab spiders being able to walk side to side and are more inclined to walk kind of sideways and go around the flower to hide from me when trying to find them than running forward or backwards. A lot of spiders will have a few larger eyes in the middle or maybe a distinctive arrangement of rows on the eyes but crab spiders don't have the best of vision because they don't have any larger eyes than any others all their eyes are very very tiny almost invisibly tiny and kind of scattered throughout the front of their prosoma or the head on top of their mouth parts. They're more likely to feel their prey coming into contact with them before they see it. Which is another reason why this octopus crab spider here has its legs completely stretched out in front of it. So that way it has a large surface area of coverage over this branch to where if an ant were walking on it, this spider would feel the ant crawling long before the ant would even see the face of the spider coming up in front of it. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning about this beautiful octopus crab spider, but I'm going to put it back on one of these branches close to where we found it. All right, children, this is what I have right here is one... What is that? If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where we learn about the strange and nocturnal tropical orb weaver. Enjoy!